With regard to patchwork robes, we already discussed uh, the, the Buddha figure and how the Buddha has two different types of, of robes. One is, in fact, uh, depicted as patchwork and the other one as uh, ripple-like, like ripples on a pond or on a lake. Then we talked about the elders, the Stavira, and how they're, they can be uh, based on either uh, Chinese stylistic elements or they can be based on, on Himalayan that is trying to represent what they think would be Indian um, aesthetics. Now, for the, for the Himalayan and Tibetan monastics, the patchwork robes are relatively, um, relatively plain um, strips of cloth, alternating colors, generally orange, yellow, or red. And uh, the only real difference that you can clearly make between, um, uh, between depictions of Indian monastics and depictions of of Tibetan, um, Bhutanese, Nepalese, Himalayan monastics is generally the Indians either wear no upper shirt, they wear no shirt on the upper body, or they wear a blue shirt, blue colored shirt. The, the Himalayan teachers and Tibetan teachers, Mongolian, they always have a shirt. They either have a, a simple a monastic shirt, which was uh, popular in sculpture and painting up to the 15th century. And then after that, we get the more complex monk's shirt, which uh, is based on, on the appearance of an elephant with uh, large um, rectangular lappets over each shoulder, and then uh, two large uh, folding um, uh, strips of cloth down the center representing uh, elephant's tusks and 84 pleats under each armpit, and the pleats in the cloth represent the 84 Mahasiddhas. So it's a more complicated shirt. So the patchwork robes for, for Himalayans, Tibetans is generally uh, more, more simple, more simple style. Now occasionally, depending on the style of art, then it can be uh, more ornate, such as with the Gyanse style. Uh, but other than that, it's generally uh, more, a little more simple, simple in, in appearance. Now, the real topic here are what, are what are the confusions and what are the exceptions? Because patchwork robes are described in the monastic vinya of early Buddhism. It, it, it's the attire of monks and nuns. It's their garments, what they wear. And it's meant to be not that, all that attractive. So who else wears the, the, the patchwork robes that can be confusing? Okay, well, we do have Padmasambhava. Padmasambhava in his main form um, can wear the patchwork robes as well. And how this is explained, because he is not a monk in his main form, but how this is explained is he maintains the three levels of vows which, which are contained in Buddhism, what is termed in... in Northern Buddhist language, the Hinayana, the Mahayana, and the Vajrayana. So, representing the the basic vows, the Vinaya of of, uh, and the the basic uh, early vows, killing, stealing, lying, and such. Then he wears the monastic robes uh, under his other robes to represent that. But then we have forms of, of Padmasambhava, such as Shakya Senge, who is in Buddha appearance and therefore can have patchwork robes. Then we have Pema Jumne as a Pandita, again a monastic and with patchwork robes. The real departure comes with Dorje Drolo as one of the wrathful forms of Padmasambhava, and he is the one who stands atop a pregnant tigress, and he very often wears monastic robes. There are other forms of uh, Padmasambhava which also can uh, wear wrathful forms, which can wear patchwork robes as well. Now, there are other figures that are, that are generally looked upon as either deities or, or spirits or ghosts or protectors, protector deities, worldly protector deities, that can wear patchwork robes. And first and foremost is the very notorious uh, Dorje Shugden. Um, secondly, we have uh, Karma Tensung of the Palpung Monastery, 
we have the manager, and I'm sorry, I can't recall the name, the manager of Tsurpu Monastery that became uh, a kind of a demon spirit and was subjugated, and he is now a guardian of the storehouse of Tsurpu Monastery and possibly Rumtek. Then we have the donkey-faced monk of uh, Drepung or Sera Monastery. We have uh, Trakpasenge of Menri Monastery and the Bun religion. And we have others because we also have um, all kinds of monastic figures wearing patchwork robes that are assigned as uh, outer protector deities or outer figures for um, for uh, protector deities such as Mahakala, even even uh, possibly some uh, more worldly protectors such as Pehar, but it is very common to have these kind of. Uh, um, um, it's explained that the outer retinue of Mahakala might have a, a, a thousand sorcerers, a thousand uh, uh, bhikshus, a thousand monks. Um, so we, we we have this kind of idea. Uh, so there can be confusion with patchwork robes. But uh, understand that uh, primarily patchwork robes uh, belong to the system of, of uh, monks, gar monks and nuns' garments. And uh, then there is a separate system of uh, using it uh, fairly decoratively for um, protector deities and monks gone wrong who have turned into uh, um, uh, ghostly spirits that have been subjugated but turned into protector figures for various traditions. Press the like button. You can subscribe. Uh, you can go to the Himalayan Art Resources website and you can donate or you can help support HAR by becoming or joining uh, HAR on Patreon.